Did you used to be an actress? Never been. It was, yeah. I wanted to play someone a little bit different. And when I reread the book, when they came back to me and said, because I approached them and said, I'd like to be in the series. And then they came back and said, we'd like you to play Sebastian. I thought, I'm not sure he's the one I want to play. He's, he's the glitter one, glittery one. But there was something about the, a quintessential Englishness in Charles Ryder and the fact that he was, so to speak, the host to the party. He was there at the beginning and he was there at the end. Um, and in a way, it was his learning, his, his story. I thought, that's the guy I'd like to play. Well, I don't like stepping in the same footprints twice. And one of the problems with this business for an actor is that what you're successful at doing, you're asked to repeat. So you have to be quite muscular in stepping sideways. And then played a Polish builder in a movie by Skolomowski called Moonlighting, which was a conscious attempt to say, don't categorize me. I don't want a career. I don't want that sort of career. I want to bounce about a bit. Well, Reversal of Fortune was a movie which, like many movies I'm asked to do, I don't want to do at the time. And I felt there was an intrinsic vulgarity in playing somebody who was still alive and who had gone through a very difficult time in their life, mm -hmm. uh, as Klaus von Bülow had, and to have it regurgitated as a movie. I thought, oh, I wouldn't like that to happen if it was me. I never liked myself very much in any movie. Uh, but I think there's something about a completeness of a period which Lolita has. But you know, you, 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 you remember films um, by the fun you had making them and, and the mission. I suppose it was as a woman to have uh, two such gynecologists prowling about based on truth. The Mansell twins, I think they were, or the Marcus twins. Um, and I spoke to women whose gynaecologists they were, and they were never sure which one they were seeing. Um, to, to add to it, the trick of twins is fun. Hmm. Well, I don't know what that is. I mean, I... I um, I don't have a desire to show as an actor. I've always thought that acting shouldn't show and that it's rather like the panty line, you know. I think we all sort of rather hope that probably a lady is wearing a pair of panties, but we don't necessarily want to see the line on the jeans. And acting is a bit like that. It should be there, but not show. I know it does. Um, but I have to get into a, into a state of mind when I'm playing a character that I am, not that I'm pretending. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's my chief job, in a way, is to, is to get inside the skin of the character enough that I am convinced I am him, especially with a character who, who, who exists, like, like Klaus von Bülow, where one might see a picture of him in the newspaper and think, who's that person pretending to be me? That's the attitude you have to have. Yes, it's always disappointing. Well, I know at the time, I've never done a film where I haven't looked immediately at it and said I could have done better. Uh, that's probably healthy. When you, when you first see a bit of work you've done, all you can do is to remember how you felt during a certain scene or how, what you were trying to do during mm -hmm. that scene. No, I haven't. I did a little night music, um, Stephen... Uh, Sondheim's Little Night Music two years ago in, in New York for a couple of months. Um, and remember lying on the rehearsal room floor on the cold lino after we'd been doing a dance with uh, Susan Stroman and lying there just having a rest while we everyone 
took a break and had a cup of coffee and thinking to myself, I'm having so much fun, so much fun. I don't, I don't deserve this much fun at my age. Um, I must get back to this. And, and I'm talking at the moment, so I'm having a meeting tomorrow about something we might do in the theatre. Uh, I'd like to, this year, mm -hmm. go back to it. You get feedback, immediate feedback from the, from the audience in a, in a rather truer way than than in, the, in a film where your performance has, so to speak, been crafted by the director, by the editor. He was writing a story for a certain medium, and his medium was a, was a playhouse without much scenery, in fact, with no scenery. Um, so he had to paint the picture. Think when we talk of horses that you see them printing their prow to who's on the receiving earth. Uh, and also the audience had to do a lot of work too. But in order for them to do the work, Shakespeare had to use the language to paint the picture. Film paints the picture on its own. You don't have to do that. So you can cut out an awful lot of stuff. Um, and uh, I think that's the way to do it. I mean, you can do, Kenneth did uh, the complete Hamlet. Um, so there are horses for courses. Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet, I thought, was a fantastic way to deal with, with Shakespeare on the screen. I don't think it's taking liberties. I think Shakespeare is robust enough as a writer to allow almost anything to be done with him, and he still comes out shining. I think I used to be more difficult than I am. Um, I, I think there was an element of a desire for perfection, which is a fruitless desire when you're working in, in movies particularly, because you're not really in control. And I, I would spend a lot of time trying to get things as good and as good and as good as they could be. And as who was it? Um, one of the goons, uh, Jonathan Miller. No, not Jonathan Miller. Uh, Peter Cook. He was doing a little bit on a television show in England. And uh, he'd written his own, it was a comedy, and he'd written his own bit of script. And he recorded it. And then he went off down to have a cup of tea. And the other actor said, how did it go? And he said, oh, I think it's all right. And they said, did you do it, ask to do it again? He said, so, you know, I think there's a very thin line between being a perfectionist and being a... <laughs> and I do, I do think that's true. And, and I think I, I probably suffered through um, falling on the wrong side of that once or twice. In my... But now as I've got older, I've got more philosoph philosophical. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that the best work tends to come from people being very comfortable and being very happy working together. So that's what I try to do now. I try to create that situation. And out of that will come something which may work or may not work, but it's really beyond our control. No, I have, I have like all of us, I have, um, I have vices. Smoking is my public vice. <laughs> I do quite enjoy it, yeah, I do. I do, I did a lot of comedy in theatre. I, I, in, in movies I fell into a different area. Um, sort of internalising angst, uh, enigma, mm -hmm. all of that. Um, I've got a comedy, well, I hope it's a comedy, well, you never know. Uh, I, I approached it as a comedy. Um, it's a movie that comes out, I think, towards Christmas time, uh, which Disney is releasing. Uh, it's called, I believe it's going to be called Casanova. It is loosely based on the early life of Casanova in Venice, where we shot it two summers ago, or last summer maybe, I can't remember. Um, I play a papal cardinal, an uh, inquisitory general, trying to catch Casanova. Uh, so I hope that will be seen as a comedy, but one is always nervous of saying that, because people may watch it and think this is completely unfunny. No, I mean, my, you say my son is an actor. My, my younger son is at the moment uh, hoping to train as an actor. My elder son did a little bit of acting with me. He, did, he played Mamilius, the youngest of Shakespeare's roles, when he was six, uh, when I played Leontes in The Winter's Tale. 
and then he went on to make a film with me when he was 10. But that was really so that he could understand what it was Mummy and Daddy did. He was uh, very conscious that the people in his school knew me, and he couldn't understand why that was. Um, and he would sort of see our photographs in the newspaper, and he couldn't understand why that was. And I thought, well, I, I think before he gets too seduced by all these rather areas of unimportance, better he learn what it is we do when we go off to work. And so that's why we involved him in a, in a play, in a film. Um, as a result, he's now a photographer. Yeah. I bought it as a ruin some eight years ago. Uh, it had been built in 1450 and ruined in 1603 and remained a ruin till the present day. And I, I, uh, it was a landmark quite near where I live in southwest Ireland. And I had the energy and arrogance to think that someone was going to buy that soon and do it up. And I thought it ought to be me because I thought anybody else would do it wrong. So. Uh, since I, I'm probably paid more than I should be for my movie work, and since this particular renovation project was going to cost more than it should, I thought it's a good equation that I do it. And I took two years out of the business to, to do it and ran the job. Um, hired, fired and paid on Fridays and designed and ran it. And then started gently going back to work um, as the finances demanded it. Um, and it took six years to do, and that was a great project, and something I'm, I, I'm thrilled to have done, and, and I think which outweighs uh, any of my acting work, certainly. Mm. But I also like to ride horses and sail boats and um, live life, you know. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a, a veterinarian because I wanted a life with animals and I wanted a life which would allow me to work in the city a little bit and in the country a little bit. And, and I, I, but I was no good at the sciences, so that had to go by the board. Um, and then I, I wanted to be a gypsy, so I, I, I thought the, the travelling circus or the travelling funfair or, or the theatre. And because I'm middle class, I went for the theatre. Yeah, well, that's what it gives me. It actually it has given me the life that I wanted as a veterinarian. I mean, I, have, I spend some time in the city, some time in the country. I travel, I have my animals. Um, so I'm very happy. Now, I, I, I think probably I would enjoy being an architect because I, I'm very interested in space and when it works and when it doesn't work and when it, the, the way... Frank Geary is a friend of mine, and I go to his buildings, and, and I see the way they make the spirit soar. Um, the Disney uh, Concert Hall, for instance, or the, the, the Bilbao Museum, uh, the Guggenheim, two extraordinary buildings. And that's an area which, which now interests me, but when I was a young man, it didn't. So. Very nice to be able to get a late reservation at a restaurant, I have to say. Um, I think being famous is a way I could answer that rather than being a star. I'm not okay. I mean, that's really what you mean, isn't it? Being famous. Um, and of course, what that means is that more people know you than you know. So it's a slight imbalance. But there's an element of that living in a village, you know. I mean, you recognise a few people, but a lot of people know you. And that's quite nice. It means you can go to the butcher's and buy a pork chop and discover you haven't got any money on you and say, I'll pay you tomorrow. And he knows you, and so, you know, that's fine. In a big city, it would be hard to do that. Um, so in a way, what fame has brought me is it's made the world my village. People know you and like you. And in a way, with, 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 with so many of us on this planet, it is wonderful if we are recognisable. And I enjoy that. I also like my privacy, so it's a strange sort of balance I try to work. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, when one isn't feeling on great form and, and looking like something that the dog brought in, it would be nice not to be recognisable, but uh, if the if the 
the right situation presented itself. Um, I'm very spoiled as an actor in that I can do maybe four films a year if I don't play the lead and be well paid for it. If I was to make a film, it would take me around three years probably and I'd get very badly paid for it. So it has to be something I really care about. And I've been flirting with an idea for some while and can't quite get it together as I want yet and maybe never will. Um, the two times when I have directed, one was a, an hour's film about refugeedom. Mm -hmm. I was very comfortable. And, and I love working with actors and getting performances from actors. Sadly, in that, I also appeared in it. So I was a little bit split. I won't want to do that again. Um, I think I'm more comfortable probably directing than acting. Uh, but it's very hard to make the sort of films that I'm interested in making. It's very hard to get them financed these days. Um, there isn't such a breadth of, or well, there isn't backing available for such a breadth of movies as there was 15, 20 years ago. So I might have missed the boat. I don't know. I've, I, I've never regretted. I try never to regret, never to envy, and never to be jealous, because I find them very debilitating emotions. Um, no, I, I am what I am. I've had the most extraordinary good fortune. I have a limited talent and it's carried me a long way. Um, I, I live a wonderful life. I have a healthy, happy family. Um, I still love my work. I work with extraordinary people. I travel through my work. I get to see great places in the world. I think to regret would be churlish. Pleasure.